Friends, do you believe in the hereafter? Then you know what I am hereafter. <laughs> Friends, um, and first of all, I would like to really thank Father Paul, Father Dominic, and all of you for the warm welcome. As I said at the beginning, I see you all as joyful people, very welcoming parish, very warm. Thank you for your smiles. And uh, really thank God for this opportunity that he gave to reflect with you about the mission of the Diocese of Agartala. I am representing Bishop Lumen Montero. He was supposed to be here in person, but because of the COVID situation, he is not able to travel. Um, but he is my guru. You know, during my formation years, Bishop Lumen really helped me to be who I am today. Uh, I'm a product of the missions. So today, I would like to share with you a little bit about the Diocese of Agathala, some of my own experience as a missionary living for 12 years in the missions of Northeast India, and uh, our God's call to action for each of us based on the scripture today. Those, for those of you who know the map of India, India is a huge country, uh, but it is just one third the size of United States, but um, it has a population of more than 1.28 uh, billion. Let's say, but we, I come from the southern part of India, it's called Kerala. Uh, we are Christians from 50 to 80. We are called St. Thomas Christians. Apostle St. Paul went to India and evangelized us. So my great-grandfathers and you know, grandparents, they're all Christians. But whereas in the northern part of India, up near the hill like Burma, Bhutan, bordering Bangladesh and China, uh, we have our missions there. And it was, for me, it was my childhood dream to become a missionary priest because I wanted to give my life for God and for others. I believe a life well lived is a life lived for others. So I'll share with you some of my experiences later, but the Diocese of Agartala was established in the year 1996 by Pope John Paul II. And Bishop Lumen was the first bishop of that mission diocese. When it started, there were only nine parishes and uh, 11,000 Catholics. But today, after 25 years, this is a jubilee year. After 25 years, now he has uh, more than 24 parishes in the Diocese of Agartala and more than 50,000 Christians. Um, I remember living in that missions there it was so joyful because uh, people have not heard about Jesus. We have been so enriched, but then the people in the missions, uh, like when I was there as a missionary, I worked there 12 years, at least the first year itself, I must have baptized more than 500 people. When you go talk to them about Jesus, sometimes the whole village, they come over, they want to, so we catechize them for a year, and then they, they embrace uh, the faith. So the Diocese of Agartala, being true to its motto, lead us onward. The Diocese, they, 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 they are really moving ahead, providing past, pastoral and uh, educational ministry, health and healing ministry, youth ministry, women empowerment, economic and uh, human development activities, Self-help groups, this is a very important thing because that really helps a lot of women in the villages. Self-help groups, economic and human development activities, um, ecumenical dialogue, peace initiatives, and so on. So, <clears throat> you know, be, being a missionary living there, for me it was really life transforming. You know, I had a big dream as a child to be a missionary and to serve in the missions. But when I really went to the missions, I knew that things are not the same. That fantasy all got changed because life in the missions were really tough. You know, uh, sometimes we have to 
uh, walk for hours, climbing hills and valleys, crossing rivers to reach some families. But one beautiful thing is, one thing that I noticed among the people of Northeast India, at least the tribal population, they are happy people. They don't possess much, but they are very joyful people. You know, I have seen children dying of malaria, walking miles to fetch clean drinking water, five to six year old girls staying back home to take care of their younger ones. You'll be surprised to see five, six year old little girls tying their younger ones at the back with a cloth because their parents have to go to work in the field and they don't have any opportunity even to go to school. So they take care of the younger siblings, uh, some of people living in inhuman conditions. One thing that struck me particularly um, in Northeast India, where I worked for 12 years, was that uh, there are no beggars among them. People are always ready to share. They live in communities, and people are content always. And um, one thing that we realized, education is the only way, the best way to bring peace and prosperity to that part of the world. My initial years, I was in, uh, in a school. Um, a mission means not just a parish alone. We have uh, a school and there's a boarding for boys, a boarding house for girls. So we bring these children from all the interior villages and keep them with us and then educate them. Something that really struck me was um, during one of those uh, vacation time, I remember a little girl named Poonam. She was a sixth grader, beautiful girl, good dancer, capable child. Uh, after the vacation, she did not come back. She didn't come back to the school. So I was wondering what happened. And I knew that she was an orphan. She didn't have uh, her parents. She was living with one of her uh, brothers or brother-in-law. So I waited for almost a week and she didn't show up. So I just was thinking what happened, you know? So I took the Jeep. Uh, it's a very long drive, very interior village. And I reached there. I heard a lot of crying, wailing and crying. I said, what happened? What's wrong? So I went inside. I saw this little girl, beautiful young girl. She just became skin and bone and sitting on the bed, just holding onto a pillow because she could not even lie down. It seems she contracted tuberculosis. And then I said, I said, why are you all crying? They said, she's going to die. Poonam is going to die. And uh, I said, no, <laughs> this can't happen. She's such a young girl, you know. Uh, so what I did, I just lifted her along with the pillow, put her in the Jeep, drove her all the way back to Agartala, that is the city and the hospital that we was almost 85 miles from the mission where I was. Kept her with the Mother Teresa sisters, and they really took care of her for more than six months, treated her in a hospital, and she completely got recovered. And friends, <laughs> last week, in fact, this Poonam called me up, and she is now happily married with the three children. You know, by our simple act of love, we can touch so many lives. We are all called to be missionaries in our own little ways. Like today's scripture is inviting us to become missionaries. Like Amos, um, like Amos, each one of us are chosen by God through the mystery of divine adoption in Jesus to become missionaries to preach the good news by Christian witnessing. The second reading, St. Paul explains the blessings that we have received through our baptism and the responsibility we have to become missionaries. And in the gospel, the evangelist tells the story 
of Jesus' commissioning the 12 apostles to preach the good news of repentance, forgiveness of sins, liberation and salvation through Jesus. Just as the prophet Amos um, preached the repentance to ancient Israel and Paul to preach the good news of salvation to the Gentiles, so Jesus sends forth his followers to proclaim the good news and bring healing to those most in need. And in fact, when you go to some of these villages, and I told you that we sometimes have to walk for hours to reach a village. But when you reach at the entrance of the village, the entire village will wait for you at the entrance. And the, the moment the missionaries, we missionaries reach, we may just, we don't have too many things to carry because it, it takes hours to walk. So just a mask it and a little backpack. When you reach there, celebration begins. They begin to sing and welcome you, clap and take you to the village and provide you the best that they have. Maybe some damn little rice or a piece of chili or if they have little fish, they go to the pond and catch some fish. But they are, they are, they possess so much. And the only thing that they possess is pure joy. So being with this uh, mission, it really transformed me. And I'm sure uh, we can all become missionaries in our own little ways. We are able to all do all this most wonderful work is because of the support of people, good people like you. In just a few moments, you will have the opportunity to participate in these exciting works. That is to say, you can help Bishop Lumen continue to bring hope to the people of the diocese. This time, the diocese is raising money for St. Joseph School. And remember, this is the year of St. Joseph. St. Joseph School, this is a school just 15 miles away from the city. Um, the area is, uh, uh, the people are very illiterate, illiter illiteracy rate is very high. Uh, the number of uh, dropouts are very high. And the economic condition is very poor. Education is the only way to improve their situation. Within five years of its existence, now the school has uh, grown up to 800 children and they are steadily growing and parents are asking for more good quality education from the Catholic Church. So they need to uh, need more classrooms and uh, other infrastructural facilities. So the money that you give will be used for this urgent and important purpose. When you share in this noble venture, you become a missionary. And you are our sister parish this weekend. So whatever you give will go a long way. My pledge to you is uh, it will be put to good use. Please uh, give what you can. And if you can't do anything, don't worry, at least pray. Because today missionaries need prayer because very challenging situation, especially in some other parts of India. You know, because prayer is the most powerful force in heaven and on earth. And just with your prayers, you can help. If you don't have money, don't worry about it. So, so please, if possible, give whatever you can to help the Diocese of Agartala to bring hope to the people of Tripura. And Father Dominic has given me the permission to tell you, in case if you could not bring any money, you can make an online payment. The only thing he said, you had to do it twice. <laughs> so, uh, so once again, I would like to thank the pastor, Father Paul, Father Dominic, and the bishop for letting me be with you today. And thank you once again for your hospitality and warm welcome. God bless you.